So good morning and welcome to another edition of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I am joined by Jonna Breeden, who is the CEO and integrator at Enable Me. Welcome, Jonna. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. I know you've flown up from the Hawke's Bay to be with us. I really appreciate that. So Enable Me, tell me what it is that Enable Me does. So fundamentally, Enable Me provides financial coaching to New Zealanders to help them unlock their potential and achieve their financial goals, whether that be reducing their mortgage quicker, but most importantly, setting themselves up for retirement later in life. Perfect. And is there a particular type of client that Enable Me likes to work with, or is it just Kiwis? Well, the, the great thing about Enable Me is that every every person in New Zealand can can use financial literacy and financial accountability really to get ahead faster. I mean, even even those people who think they are good with money, myself included, can benefit from a layer of accountability. And that's what Enable Me looks to provide. Yeah. And that's really interesting because your background is actually in accounting. Is that right? I know. Ironic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think sometimes, you know, it's like, it's like the builder's house. We um, often find that we can say all the right things, but we don't necessarily follow them ourselves. Yeah, exactly. But but also it shows that no matter how, you know, no matter how sophisticated you are in, in, in your financial affairs, you can always do better. Yeah. And, and, and that's what we really look to um, unlock. Yeah. And I, I liken it to we're using a personal trainer right we all know that going to the gym eating healthily all that stuff is what we need to do um and i and i'm a food scientist so i mean of all the people i probably know the best what i should and shouldn't be doing but without that accountability and without somebody actually there holding me accountable um helping me when having the tough times and just being my kind of cheerleader just doesn't get done yeah and it's it's not about not spending money it's about it's about having the freedom to spend money on what's important to you but then working around the edges on well how can we how can we tweak things here or tweak things there and you know just another set of eyes in terms of what people are doing with investments and and whatnot uh, can make a huge difference that external view is really important okay cool so you joined enable me how long ago was that now about 18 months ago yeah and you came to me and you said hey look um we're looking at doing aos so we'll come back to that in a moment before we get started <laughs> i forgot to ask i always ask my guests can you give me a professional and a personal best just so that the, the listeners can get a bit of a sense of who jono really is apart from being an accountant yeah exactly <laughs> so i guess my professional best is uh, up until the end of last year I owned um, or co-owned my own accounting practice mm-hmm. and um, I came into that at the age of 27 so I was I was extremely young and naive um, so um, my professional best has certainly been navigating navigating that journey to get into the point where I could I could exit and go on to the next thing which is how I landed with enable me so yep. I'm really proud of that yep. and my my personal best um, I am a a rugby referee yep so i'm involved um at the moment each weekend predominantly running on the sideline um but before that i was actually an international netball umpire ah, and and umpired the last gold medal match of the commonwealth games four years ago so i am ambitious yes. um but i i really enjoy sport and 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 officiating seems to have been the way that i've been able to achieve that and travel around the world so that's been pretty awesome that is pretty awesome i, I didn't realize i knew you were a rugby um, referee and referee you were a netball one there you go one. There, there you go, go. i learned something new also <laughs> so let's get back to sort of enable me then so you came on board 18 months ago tell me a little bit about that journey and then i say you picked up the phone you, you we'd been talking already about your accounting practice under dunedin and then you said hey look i think eos could be perfect for enable me tell me a little bit about that journey and what's happened in the last 18 months yeah so i guess uh, enable me has been has, has been around for the last 14 15 years and obviously it's the brainchild of of hannah mcqueen who's yep. an amazing human um and you know has has revolutionized the, the way kiwis think about their finances and as she approached me a while ago and and really could see the value in having somebody to run alongside her and do some help her with some of the heavy lifting so she could she could focus on what she wanted to focus on yep. and i guess that's what really brought eos to the front of my mind in terms of a a tool that we could use in our business to take us to that next level because i wanted to be able to harness the absolute best of hannah which is the visionary which is all the funny ideas um and running at pace and actually organize that in a way that wasn't causing with respect a whole lot of um you know, a, a whole lot of hassle havoc. and havoc <laughs> yes. um, within the wider business. So we just needed a way that we could do what we we're already doing, yep. but do it in a in a considered way and and with a little bit of a blueprint. So 
we didn't feel like we were flying by the seat of the pants. Yeah. I mean, Hannah is an amazing lady. And those of you who've heard her, I mean, she really is inspirational. She's got amazing ideas. She created this whole thing from scratch and has done an amazing job. But she is your typical visionary, isn't it? And we talk about a visionary being somebody who has the great big ideas, always looking for the next thing, um, tends to be a little bit disruptive in the business just in terms of because they work at pace and they have all these ideas, they can throw them into the business and the business runs around trying to execute on them all and lose its focus. Um, and I think that Hannah is, you know, definitely, she has created everything. She'll take it to the next level, but there was an element of that. Where's the focus in the business? Yeah. And it was, and it was just a case of having somebody just share the burden, right? Yeah. I mean, she, um, no idea is a silly idea. And I think from, from, I really enjoy our relationship because it's just a constant backwards and forwards, bouncing ideas. How can we do things differently? How can we do things better? And I mean, when you think about it, like I'm hugely grateful for Hannah allowing me to share in that journey because wearing her hat, it can't be easy to, you know, reimagine what you've always done in a slightly different way. But she is amazing at that. Yeah. And the fact that she's leaned into the process has has only assisted really in, in getting the business from where it is to where it, where, it, where it is today. Yeah. And so you play the role as the integrator. So for those who aren't aware of EOS, what is an integrator role? What do you do? So basically the integrator role um, is the person who is responsible for, for the leadership team and making sure that you have the right people in the right seats. And in our business, the biggest role the integrator plays is removing obstacles and barriers. Mm. So it's about leaving Hannah free to do what she does best, the visionary piece, blue sky thinking, and in our business too, obviously Hannah is on the tools at the same time. So I, I also pick up the mantle of, of basically well, CE and, and running any ideas to ground um, a, a alongside her. So yep. it's, it's really just that extra, that extra bum in the middle, really, just to <laughs> make sure that the place is running smoothly. Yeah, it's the accountability, the discipline, all that sort of thing, making sure you've got the right people doing the right things. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so it's been 18 months. Tell me a little bit about that journey. What's been the highs and the lows in that journey so far? Yeah, well, I, I won't lie. I mean, starting the EOS journey was a bit of a shock to the system <laughs> because we had a we had a situation where we had a leadership team, if you call it that, where there was, I think, 15 people around the table, which is basically half our business. <laughs> yeah. Um I joke, but it wasn't quite that bad. But, you know, we, we had various people there who had skills and who had really good opinions about how our business should work. And I guess it was the, the initial rub was getting those people to understand that that wasn't actually being devalued. We just needed more rigor and accountability around how we frame those roles up. Mm -hmm. So we've now got a leadership team of six um, and and that's that's been working well, but I, the thing you learn with EOS is that it's never set in stone. I mean, we've changed the makeup of the leadership team once already. I think we'll probably change it again, yep. um, just as we begin to understand what are actually the pressure points in our business, what does our business need to grow, achieve our goals. So I think, yeah, the, the journey towards accountability has been, has been challenging mm -hmm. because um, it's not necessarily something that we have done well in the past but that being said now we're really starting to get the traction with the rollout throughout the wider organization underpinned by the piece of work we did on our core values and our purpose yeah. which was which was hugely powerful and for us now it's about just living into that really yeah Perfect. And so, yeah, we talked, you talked about the, the first, um, first day, if you like, which is always, it's always one of the fun days, I think, both for me as an implementer, but also as the, as you weren't saying that at the time, I'm I sure. Was, I was like, get me a wine, get me out of here. <laughs> no, no, but it, but it is, I mean, because we're basically fundamentally challenging um, the way that everything runs and with the accountability chart, which is not an org chart, but it is an accountability chart about who's accountable for what, there can be some pretty major changes in there. And I think, like you said, that that changes over time. We don't expect it to be set in stone. Um, but yeah, so from that day, um, interestingly, we don't do the stuff like the vision and the core values first. We actually teach some tools that you can work. So we went through the accountability chart. We decided to be on the leadership team. You went into the business. What changed from that point forward that was different to what you were doing before? Well, I guess we had we had some structure mm -hmm. around what we were, certainly in terms of our meetings. We used to have a lot of meetings, <laughs> for, I would argue, for meeting's sake. Yep. Um, so now we have, you know, with our level 10 meetings each week, we've got a, a structure around you know, how we actually run our leadership team meetings. We, yep. we, everyone's quite clear of the rules of the game in that. If they've got an issue, they chuck it up. 
we debate it, we run it to ground. And probably the most important thing, and we're still learning on this as well, is not just talking and getting down in the weeds, but like what is actually the issue and looking to come out of that with some actions mm. to improve. Yeah. And I think um, we've only just got into the rhythm of that now, yeah. 12 months down the track. And the, we're now walking the talk in, in terms of our other teams within our business, because now they're on that same journey that we are, is you know really honing in on what actually is the issue. Because it's hugely powerful <laughs> If I look at my IDS each week, I think we got through 14 issues yesterday. Because wow. when you're focused on what is actually the issues, and you'll probably say to me, that's too many. We shouldn't have had them there in the first yeah. place. <laughs> Not um, at all. <laughs> but, you know, we, you know, you can get so much done when you've got, you, you know, you've got 90 minutes in a room together. We're going to come out of this with some real tangible action points. And I think that's what's hugely powerful about it. Yeah. And I think that I always liken um, EOS to being like a spotlight that we put onto the business where all these issues do surface. And at first, that can be quite scary because it's suddenly like, oh my gosh, we've got all these issues. Um, 14 in a meeting, I think it's actually quite quite good. Because um, <laughs> what it means is you're actually identifying them. And then you're able to kind of really dig down and go, okay, what is the real issue here? And hopefully solve them at the root cause, which means they then disappear forever. So it's not, yeah, it is a definitely a good tool. It's not unusual to have a lot of issues that suddenly surface through going through that process. Yeah, I think when you're in a high growth business like ours is as yeah. well, and a very entrepreneurial business, um, you, you are going to have things that pop up from time to time. And it's about prioritizing those issues as well, right? Because you can't fight fires on all fronts. Yep. Um, and, you know, there's always opportunities to run after. So I guess that discipline around what's important to cover off now, what's going to make the boat go faster. Yep. Again, referencing back to what our core purpose is. And I mean, we've just gone through this journey ourselves at the moment. Like we, we've gone from, you know, having various different arms in our business to actually saying, well, what is actually our core business here? And let's spend some time delving into that. And that's, and that's kind of the journey we're on at, at this yeah. quarter so yeah. um it's really powerful yeah and i think i always say it's a, it's a, it's a journey right it's not there's no kind of destination as such because just when you think you well, hopefully it's it. a journey to a tropical island somewhere <laughs> i mean that's what we always say <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we plan our rocks isn't it it's like imagine yourself on a tropical island and you've got these um these, this scorecard that you're looking at and how do we actually measure it and what do we measure in terms of rocks but yeah okay let's hope so uh, but it is a journey i mean it doesn't every business we get taught that businesses grow you know in this beautiful s curve and that's not really the case only it? at university <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and every time we get to a new growth bit, something else changes. And then we find that we're going through a process again. So uh, what about the so the challenges of being around, you know, yes, um, deciding who you are, what you stand for, where your core focus is, having the right people in the right seats. What have been some of the real successes that you've seen in that sort of journey so far? Yeah, well, certainly the successes in that journey, the, I mean, the first one would be Hannah yeah. and her role was visionary. I mean, just the a just you can you can see that the capacity it's freed up in her mind um knowing that i'm sitting in beside her um you know doing some of the heavy lifting on strategic projects removing obstacles it's a let and she said to me it allows her to be a lot freer yep. um it allows her time and space to think of the next best thing that enable me is going to do yes. you know the board has commented as well because we we run by a board yep. um what a difference they've noticed and just you know, the capacity that we've got to run at pace at things with two of us kind of being able to play to each other's strengths. Yep. So that's been a huge success. It's like real clarity around, um, well, it, as opposed to even time to have that sort of clarity of thought. Yeah, and I think yep. that the, the, the thing that's quite unique in, in our situation is I live in the Hawke's Bay and Hannah runs the business from Auckland. So we've also got the element of remote working, which we were people were worried about how that might work at the start, but it's almost it's almost played to our strengths in a way because I'm free from interruption to just get on and do stuff. Yep. Um, obviously I still manage a team and there's still the people element, which, you know, I need to cover off, but by virtue of location, it also allows me the freedom to really get into the weeds on some of the obstacles in our business and how we can do things better. Yep. Um, and yeah, I think that's been hugely powerful. Okay, so if we think about structures, you've got your level 10 meeting at the leadership thing, you say that's now rolled out to the departments as well. Do you and Hannah also have a regular sort of VI catch up? Yep. Yeah. Usually it's the weekend when I'm up here for a rugby game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but we we would talk, um, we would talk most days. I mean, we we would certainly um we would certainly spend an hour together each day on the on the phone. Sometimes it's just chewing the fat. Yep. Um, but usually it's just what do you think about this? What do you think about that? You know chewing the fat on issues um opportunities yeah we we talk talk very regularly I, I, we often joke we probably spend more time together 
um, on the phone than we would if we were sat in an office next door to each other. Sure. And it's more focused on it's really interesting because I think this is one thing we've learned about working from home is that um, sometimes by putting structures in place, you you are more focused in that time that you're actually there as opposed to yeah being in an office with a whole bunch of people where there are lots of distractions. Yeah, and it's a change for me too because you've always got the distraction of the fridge or yeah. the gym or whatever yeah. else the case may be. <laughs> I must be, I'm, actually, I'm not good at working from home, so I'm not the person to talk to, but I, I can I think it's more that if you had the right structure in place and you've got that opportunity to actually, you know, you've got, like the, like the level 10 meeting, you've got 90 minutes, you know it's 90 minutes, it's never going to go over, and so you actually have to make the most of that 90 minutes, therefore you're focused, you're disciplined, you're getting on with stuff. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Cool. Exactly. What other tools have you really enjoyed? Because obviously we've got a whole bunch of tools that help in this process. I mean, you talked about the core values and the core purpose. Yeah, I think um, in relation to the accountability chart, the GW so get yeah. it, want it, have the capacity to do it. I mean, that's, that's some phrasing that we use now when we're talking about, you know, people, not issues, but people generally in our business, yeah. like, do they get it? Do they want it? Do they have the capacity to do it? And I mean, even at a leadership team level, like we, we started off in our org structure with one person trying to be across all the operations layers of our business. And that that was just too big for one person. Yep. Then, you know, that wasn't a reflection on the person at all. It was more a case of this is just too huge. Yes. So we use that tool to actually say, you know, we, we need to change this up. Yep. Um, you know, kill, combine, keep, you know, with our issues. Yes. Like, are we actually, you know, of that 14 yesterday, we could we could combine probably half of them into actually one underlying issue. Yep. So rather than thinking, oh, this is bigger than being her, you know, actually saying, well, well, if we were to really hone in here, like and combine a few of these things, is there an underlying thing? So that's been another hugely powerful tool that we've used. Tell me about rocks and tell me how you use rocks in the business. <laughs> yeah, so rocks has has been a game changer for us because we used to have, I would say, 20 strategic priorities, we used to call them, that we yep. wanted to achieve. We were kidding ourselves that we were going to smash these out in 90 days, you know, without stopping to think that that was probably two a week. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, being able to actually have, you know, four or five key things that are going to make the boat go fast in a quarter and having somebody accountable for the delivery of each of those yep. has just honed that focus, which has been really powerful for us um, as a business that is always coming up with fresh ideas yep. is, well, actually, is this a rock? Yeah. And can we just put this on the back burner? Yep. We, we'll put it on the issues list and we'll come back to it in our next quarterly. But do we need to deal with this now? Yeah. And the way I always like to talk about rocks is that, you know, you're best to have less is more, right? So you have sort of three or four that you're actually focused on. Now, if you get those done, there's nothing to stop you from doing something else. But if you're trying to do 20 things, yeah. then you just haven't got that clarity of focus. And so you're, you're spread too thin and the chances are you're going to get out of 20, probably two, <laughs> done yeah. if you're lucky. And I mean, are they rocks is yeah. the other question. Yes. I mean, I would say before some of them were just operational. They should have been occurring. Business as usual. As BAU. Yeah. Um, so then that's an accountability piece for whoever's across that. So, um, yeah, now the strategic projects are just, sorry, the, the rocks are strategic projects yes. that are going to make the business go forward. We're going to make the go faster. Awesome. Okay. Um, and from a team perspective, because you're probably a fair way down the journey now, and it is a journey for sure. No, you never stop learning, but you're sort of 12 months into it. You have done the rollout to those sort of next level downs. We always start at leadership team level, then we start to roll it down. Tell me about the rollout and tell me about how it's been received by the, the team in general yeah so we're probably two months into the full rollout within our business so we started with the core values speech yeah. um and just introducing and that was a hugely powerful moment in our business okay. like hannah and i stood at the front of our team and you know hannah was heart on sleeve passionate about this is my business this is why i started it this is where we want to go and, and this is this is this is how we're going to get there yep. um honestly i I was sitting there at the front of the room with goosebumps, just uh, and and just taking in people's reactions as to, you know, how powerful that moment was for them to actually hear it. Yeah. Um, you could kind of see it resonate with people, mm -hmm. and and then to kind of follow off the back on that, and in, in terms of these are our values and how we're going to, this is going to be the enable me way of doing things because we often talk about the enable me way. Yep. But it was just in this ether. It was it was almost you know this unwritten thing. Well, now we've got it in writing. It's on the wall. It's on in our. It's on everyone's desks. Like 
this is now how we do, but this is the enable me way. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is that all of these things actually do exist. We, in the US, we don't actually, we just uncover what already exists and make sure it's articulated well, because Hannah, I know, has, has been hugely passionate about what she does. I suppose now she's got a way to actually communicate that on a regular basis with the people that she's working with to go, this is, you know, who we are, what we stand for, where we're headed. Yeah. And there's, and there's nowhere to hide, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is cool because, yeah. I mean, people were asking for that. Like people want the accountability. They want to be challenged. They yep. want to know why we're doing things a certain way, you know, and now they've got a, a framework and a context for that. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I think we, we often think that people avoid accountability, but it's quite the opposite. And most people, if they're, you know, people who are driven, want to know what they need to achieve and, and how they contribute to the bigger picture as well. And I suppose, you know, that speech that Hannah gave when you start talking about the future as well, it, it starts to get people on or off the bus because they either go, hell yeah, I want to be part of this, or hmm, that's not really um, my cup of tea. Yeah, and I think that's the, that's the other piece, right, is that, you know, we have had some people leave us on this journey yep. um, with our best wishes. It was a, a mutual thing. Yep. And, you know, equally we've had people that are, we're now starting to attract talent that, you know, align to what we're wanting to do and where we're wanting to go. Yep. Um, and, and, that's, and that's obviously the sweet spot. I mean, you talk to Linda, who's, who's across the people and culture of our business, like when we can start getting the momentum in the in the marketplace and people want to come and work for us and these are the reasons why like I mean that's where you know you've really you know hit, hit the nail on the head yeah absolutely and I think you know it's um it's a real reflection of the team really embracing this and, and, and living by those values and then you will you'll get people who genuinely want to come and work with you because they believe in that vision and how you work yeah and we already had an element of that because Hannah is is, is such a bubbly and well-known person in the yeah. marketplace. So we, we always had a bit of a head start on that. But so this is only just added to that, really. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Um, what are the other sort of things that have happened on the journey? What could you share? Because the listeners here are, are generally established businesses. They're, um, you know, they're looking to hear both the highs and the lows of business because, yeah, as we said, it doesn't grow like a beautiful S-curve. Yeah, well, I mean, business. one of the challenges we've obviously had is trying to, you know, that every business has been through over the last two years is our business has been affected by COVID. Yep. You know, we've had, you know, and predominantly our people are Auckland based. So, you know, we had extended lockdown periods. So trying to trying to keep the core values piece running through the business while people are, you know, at home, you know, some of them are working on their laptop on their couch. They're not set up to work from home. Yep. You know, we tr we're asking them to deal with our customers who are in crisis mode in relation in relation to their finances. Mm -hmm. But some of our people were going through the exact same thing. Yeah. Um. So it, it hasn't been an easy and it hasn't been an eerie, easy period for our business, just like any other. So we've we've had to adapt. We've had to do things differently. We've had to put people front and center and make sure that people are okay. Yeah. And that piece of work is ongoing because I don't think we can underestimate the impact that COVID has had and resetting the way that our life is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we've seen the full impact of it yet. I think we've still got some more to come, um, sadly. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, Hannah and I went down in the same in the same 10 day period and you know, talking to each other was like we didn't know each other. Like <laughs> our brains just weren't operating at all. It was it was quite funny, really. It was a real leveler. <laughs> I actually would have loved to have seen that because I know from no, my would meetings, yeah, you know, I would. I would have given me some amusement for hours just watching that. But yeah. Okay, so yeah, so it's definitely affected the way things are done. So then how have you kept the team together? Because you're right. I mean, some of them have been going through some pretty major stuff themselves. What do you think is the the, the magic that's kept them together? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I don't think we've got the silver bullet, but yep. I mean, our, our team leaders have been, have been across, you know, have been very good at having regular catch-ups, asking if people are okay. Yep. As a business, we've said, you know, is there ways that we can help? Do you need care packages? Do you need, you know, IT stuff to make your life easier at home? Like we've, we've, we've done what everyone else has done to try and to, to smooth the journey. Yep. But I guess the other bit that we've done is overlay the, this is happening now. We're going to come out the other side for our business. It only makes what we do and what we promise to our customers more relevant because financial well-being is a huge thing in New Zealand. And it's one of the single biggest causes of, of stress. And is, marriage breakups, I think. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Hannah will rattle off stats off the top of her head. But yeah. I mean, if you ask, you know, one in 10 New Zealanders, probably seven of them will have some worry about money yep. or wealth mm -hmm. or you know buying a house or yeah. future and i guess covid's only exacerbated that so but that therein lies an opportunity for us you know now people are probably more attuned to it because they've been forced to mm. 
So just take, take me a little bit on the customer journey for a customer coming into Enable Me. So um, I recognize that, hey, Kay, I'm, I'm not so great at my spending. I probably could do with a budget, whatever it might be. I get in contact with Enable Me. What happens from there? Yeah, so when we get a when we get a lead come through the door, we basically go through a process to, I guess, put you in a box in terms of what, what program or what sort of coach do you need to work with to to start the journey because it's it's just that right yeah. I mean somebody that comes into our business will be at a point and the first thing that we do is figure out what what their what their spending habits are are they there, are they a shopper or are they a saver or are they somewhere in the middle yeah. because that behavioral piece around how people are with money underpins any work mm-hmm. that we do with them it kind of comes back to their, their core um not called values, but then so the, the, the whole onion, the, the core of their whole being. I'm a shopper, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so is Hannah. Affects. So it's quite quite fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that, that actually affects the way that we treat everything, like our risk with money, all that kind of stuff is affected by that sort of um, fundamental core personality, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. and I think money is a very emotional thing, right? Yeah. So we have to get permission to, you know, un- unravel that. And mm-hmm. I think the, the, the way that we do that is, you know, and, and I've been a customer of Enable Me. Yeah. So, and I still am. So, I mean, what sticks with me as I went through my journey was I thought I was good with money. I was an accountant, yes. um, which is great. Um, but when you actually turn up the dial of, well, could you, you know, what what are you frittering away each week? Yeah. You know, and how could we be using that to get you ahead faster, mm. smash off your mortgage? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, you know, people who've got family, like how do we, how do we help them achieve their goals that they've got for their children and for the next generation? Mm. So, yeah. so yeah, when they come in the door, there's an initial what we call an FC or a financial consultation where you sit down for an hour with it, with one of our financial coaches and you know just discuss money. Yep. We've done some pre work in terms of we, we've got their bank statements. They kind of have given us an insight into how they spend their money now. Yep. So we kind of get a feel for it and and where we might be able to you know move some dials. But I guess the thing that I like about our, what we do with our customers without giving it away yeah, yeah. is that we always start from the point of what's non-negotiable. Right. So we don't seek to change that no. straight away, which if you talk to, if you just talk purely budgeting services, it's like, well, how can we slash, 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 yeah. you know, we're not having coffee. We're not going on family holidays. Well, if that's really important to a, a family, because, you know, and that was in our case, we lived away from our family. So going on an, on a holiday or going to see family was a non-negotiable. Really important. Yeah. Yeah. So we worked around what can we do with the rest of our money? Yeah. Um, so by focusing on the stuff that you have an appetite to change is a really easy start yeah. to making some behavioral change. And again, I'm going to like it to personal training. I mean, when I first went to my new personal trainer and I said to him, look, if you're going to make me eat just chicken and broccoli, forget it because yeah. I, I, won't, I won't stick to it. I just can't. I like chocolate. I like wine. So yeah. I need to somehow find a way to have that built in. Yeah. And so that was my non-negotiable chocolate and wine. <laughs> and, yeah. and now we've got a program that allows me to do a little bit of that without feeling like I'm being deprived of the stuff that makes me happy yeah well you only live once yeah i mean and COVID has proven that right yeah there's there's more important things in life um and it's just about well how how do we do it in a way that um achieves positive change in the outcomes that people are after and part of the journey with enable me is actually getting people to realize what might be possible sure so it is a personalized journey so you're kind of the person is coming in you're understanding what their strengths and weaknesses are you're working out what their goals are what their non-negotiables are and then you start to with them on a journey um to help them achieve that yeah a bit like EOS. <laughs> it is it is i mean we're, we're ultimately trying to um build out a person or a family's cash surplus yep. and then how and then so that's the first stage of the journey yep. then it's how do we put that surplus to work yeah because if that surplus can be um, multiplied by doing things in a certain way. Yep. Okay, I'm going to ask a question that's not related to enable me, but you know, you were a 27 year old with your own accounting practice. Have you got any lessons that you've learned from that first business that you're now sort of taking forward into into enable me? Yeah, well, where do I start? <laughs> I mean, my my business partners and my accounting practice, um, they were probably the single biggest lesson for me in the sense that they gave me the freedom just to learn from my mistakes. Right. Um, because and I think that you can't underestimate the ability from learning from mistakes. Um, and I, I mean, I, I, I did make some mistakes, not on client stuff, but just in terms of how I managed a business, some of my ideas in terms of, did they work? Did they not work? Yep. I mean, I guess that's one of my lessons in life is that you, business is always changing. There's, there's, there's never the right answer. Yep. You've always got to have two or three things up your sleeve to, you know, explore and and you just have to keep on that 
you know, on that chain, on that train. Yeah. And, and learn from the mistakes. Yeah. I mean, I, I've made some huge mistakes, as you well know, and lost my house, lost my car, lost everything. Yeah. Um, but I think the only thing you can do is if you don't, if you don't learn from that, then it's been a complete waste. If you can actually go, okay, here are the things I can take from it, then it's. Yeah. Now, and it, somebody once said to me, it's only a mistake if you, if you, if you do it twice. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. <laughs> okay. So um, we're running out of time, but I've got to, I always ask, you know, have you got three tips, tools, pointers, things that you would say to people um, to help them on their journey? Um, yeah, well, I think the first thing would be that just because you've always done something a, a certain way doesn't mean that it, it will always be the right way of doing things. Yep. There's, there's always ways you can change. There's always ways to reimagine how you do something. And I think, you know, it's a little bit of a cliche, but if you do what you've always done, you will probably get what you've always got or got or get less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when all reality. Like, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the, the second thing, which I probably should have said first is, you know, it's always, it's always the people. Yeah. You know, you really need to harness the collective um, abilities of your team their backgrounds, their experience, that's hugely valuable in adding into any organization. And, you know, I, I have not, always, that's always not been a strength of mine, but mm -hmm. I think as I've, as I've matured, <laughs> if you'd like to say that, yeah. you know, getting other people's views on the world only add, you know, the, the sum of the parts is great, you know, right that, the individual parts. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that, that's hugely powerful. Mm -hmm. And I guess the third thing is the accountability piece. Yeah. It, nothing you know having having a goal without a plan is is hopeless like yeah. you you actually have to write it down hold yourself accountable to it people need to know their parts in the journey and what they're responsible for and only when you have true accountability and with that comes the honesty transparency and all the rest of it and the permission to have the hard conversations. I think it's really, really important. I think that um, some people think that with all this accountability, all the fun will disappear, all the creativity will disappear. But in actual fact, I found in my experience that it becomes more fun and you can be more creative because it's almost like that stuff is, is dealt with. It's the business as usual. It's being held accountable. Then you've got the time freed up to be that, you know, more creative and have a bit more fun with what you're doing. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, cool. Hey, John, that's been really, really helpful. Thank you very much. Hey, if people wanted to get in contact uh, with you or with an Enable me for help with their financial stuff. How would they do that? Yeah, so just through our website, all our onboarding is, is there. So enable.me, very easy to remember. Easy, yeah. And for anyone listening today who wants to experience the journey, um, we'll, we'll put a link in, in the um in the podcast yeah. for, for people to come and get a special offer and, and we'll make sure that they're taken care of. So That's yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you. Very much. And if they wanted to talk to you, because I mean I'm sure there's a few people who kind of go, I'd love to hear a bit more about your story. You open to getting in contact with you? Yeah, just hit me up on LinkedIn is probably the easiest way. I'm yeah. I'm more than happy to talk to anyone. I, I love the ability to network with with people in business and and you know and share my journey and learn from others as well. So yeah, yeah you won't if if you're not abusing me to rugby match, you <laughs> you, you won't find it hard to find me. <laughs> That's really cool. Hey, John, and thank you so much for your time. And again, thanks for coming to Auckland as well. Really appreciate seeing you in person. My pleasure. Uh, awesome look forward to, to seeing you again in our next quarterly. Sounds good. Great. Thank you. Thank you.